What are you doing? Making a list. Of what? Conservatives. What are you gonna do with that list? Get them all assigned to re-education camps. These people don't deserve to be in free society. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. They're very unconstitutional. The Constitution's very unconstitutional, too. I literally hate freedom of speech. I concur. I can't wait for the day the government tells us everything we're allowed to say, but mostly not say. Like the way big tech is doing it. Oh, and uh, by the way, feel free to take your mask off around me. Thank you, that's much better. Yeah, like big tech, but only the government will be doing it instead. That'll be great. I advocate that they use nanotechnology that acts as a software system that literally controls our thoughts and speech. That way we won't be able to slip up. Those conversations are literally happening right now, unironically. See you in the gulags. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukadowski of wearechange.org. Lots of important news to get into today as two top governors of the biggest democratic states are in trouble even with their fellow Democrats. This is, of course, we get more surprising news from the Biden administration about their mandates that Russian President Vladimir Putin is definitely not following. But before we get into that, plus a lot more, the short clip that we played in the beginning of this broadcast was by Awaken with JP. If you want to watch his full video, the link to it is down in the description below. He does great work that I definitely appreciate, and he hits the nail on the head, especially with our current modern day cancel culture that the mainstream media and blue check mark individuals are cheering on in droves like it's their new blood sport. As of course, we even had an article recently by The Independent that talked about the canceling of Gina Carono's acting job in The Mandalorian proves that cancel culture doesn't exist <laughs> despite what her fans say. Yep, I didn't believe it myself. But after Gina Carano got canceled for essentially saying that we shouldn't repeat history and that we should respect our fellow neighbors, which she got canceled of, especially after the fury of blue checkmarked individuals on Twitter that got hashtag quote fire Gina Carona trending. And after all of that, according to the independent cancel culture doesn't exist <laughs> even though there's a lot of hypocrisy surrounding disney's activities that of course also works very closely with china that's accused of many vicious human rights violations some of the actions are too disturbing to even mention in this youtube video but today we even got the news that gina is back to work after of course being canceled by hollywood and disney and now just announced a new movie project with out of all things and, and places, I never thought I would be saying this, Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire's movie production company that just announced that they are working in tandem with Gina on a completely new movie project. Specifically with the Daily Wire writing, quote, they can't cancel us if we don't let them. And a lot of people are very excited about this. And they're deciding to pitch in and support the Daily Wire and their new movie studio production. So yeah. That's happening. And as more and more people get canceled and have their voice censored because of their political speech, even for the slightest offenses of wrong think like we've seen with Gina, it's also important to point out that even your private messages aren't safe. As of course, as we've been telling you this for a number of years now, close to over 10 years now, that nothing is private when it's online, especially from government agents that have been caught specifically with the NSA. How do you say this without getting uh, censored here on YouTube? spanking the monkey tail to people's private text messages over 10 years ago we confronted the head of the cia about this but now today instagram just announced that they will not only be of course targeting political posts and any kind of wrong thing that their establishment or their special interests or the very powerful institutions that they work with don't like but also specifically also your direct messages yes your private DMs will now be snooped through for alleged hate speech and offenses that Instagram may not like and can ban and disable your account for. Yes, as we've been saying, nothing is safe, nothing is sacred, nothing is secret, especially when it's online. And that has absolutely been codified time and time again, and even more today. And even though it's not the mature professional thing to say, still... I told you so. Sorry, sorry, I, I just couldn't help myself. But if you appreciated the message and you listened to us years ago and appreciate what we're doing, consider supporting us because we are fully demonetized for being extremely accurate to what we were saying was going to happen. It's 
happening right now. And one very easy way to support us is by just checking out some of the products that I personally like, that I personally use. And one of them, a brand new one, is the Conspiracy Game. Yes, I know this sounds ridiculous. The company reached out to me a couple weeks ago. They said, hey, do you want a free game? I said yes. I actually brought it over to the Tim Pool Beanie Castle. We played it a bunch of times. There was some weird questions. There was some funny questions. We laughed a lot. And uh, I really enjoyed playing this game and staying away from the screen that consumes our lives every single day with these blue lights. And it was fun. I enjoyed playing it. I think you might too. And if you're looking for a quirky niche board game about conspiracies, Check out the link down below so you can play the conspiracy game. I never thought I'd be selling board games, but um, here we are. Anyway, not surprisingly, a major story just recently broke with the governor of New York and, of course, his lies and omissions that absolutely led to devastating effects and a huge loss of life. And, and not surprisingly, information about this is actually being censored on Reddit, according to many accounts. But more importantly, as we're speaking right now, there are multiple calls, not just on social media, of a criminal prosecution of Andrew Cuomo since the bombshell admission that the New York governor's office knowingly hid the numbers of people who died in nursing homes last year in 2020 from, of course, the general public and the federal government. Again, we've been railing about this ever since we found out about it early last year. If you remember watching our videos, we said that this was an atrocity. This was a horrible move by Andrew Cuomo, where he specifically, under his directive, sent sick elderly patients back to nursing homes with an illness that, of course, we knew spread like wildfire inside of nursing homes. It didn't take a, a genius to figure that out. There, there wasn't no need for an investigation since, of course, most of the deaths were already coming from nursing homes. But still, knowing this, the New York governor decided to sign a directive specifically sending more sick people into them when there was overflow facilities, there was entire medical facilities inside of Central Park at the Javits Center, in the harbor with naval ships, and none of them were used. There was no excuse to specifically make sure and to go out of your way that sick people were sent to nursing homes. But Andrew Cuomo made that move that led to devastating effects, and now... As of moments ago, we're finding out that they actively and hid the true amount of human suffering that they personally caused. As of course, Andrew Cuomo's top aide privately apologized to Democratic lawmakers for specifically lying about the number of deaths that came from nursing homes, telling them specifically that, quote, we froze, that's the, that's the, that's the term that she used, out of fear that the true numbers would be used against us. And, and, and yeah, absolutely, because it was Andrew Cuomo that sent sick people there in the first place. Again, this actively talks about how there was a massive cover-up effort underway by the federal authorities that lied about the statistics, about the numbers of what actually was going on, misleading the general public, which, of course, led to death of countless numbers of individuals that didn't need to die. This is beyond a grand conspiracy that, of course, was just uncovered. We were calling out this policy from the very beginning. We didn't know how bad it was, and now we're finding out it was a lot worse than we even originally thought. And now we're finding out that at least... 13,000 dead seniors died because of the direct actions by Andrew Cuomo, who tried to hide them from you. What did Andrew Cuomo get for such destructive, horrible actions? Well, he actually got an Emmy and a book deal where this grandizing, self-indulged buffoon literally praised himself on his great leadership surrounding the efforts in 2020, when in reality, he's an absolute criminal that should be hauled off to jail. And Piers Morgan, I don't always agree with him, had this to say about this matter, quote, the Emmy for shameful, lying, slippery, obfuscation, and deadly dereliction of duty in a global sickness 
goes to Governor St. Andrew Como, facetiously, of course, hitting the nail on the head with his characterization of the ever self-absorbed, promoted by the mainstream media, governor of New York that should resign immediately. Now, there's not only a lot of calls for criminal prosecution of Como and his administration, there's also top Democrats inside of New York that are demanding that Andrew Cuomo be stripped of his emergency authority powers immediately, since, of course, he used and abused them for his own political purposes. And on the backdrop of this scandal, he should have these powers immediately taken away from him, as well as any kind of authority over anyone. He doesn't deserve it. No one should have them in the first place. And this Goomba Johnny wannabe should be penalized with the strictest rule of law. Republican New York Congresswoman called the news of the latest events, quote, stunning and a criminal abuse of power. And she's right. Juman Williams, a Democrat in New York City, asked, how is this okay? As, of course, the lies keep toppling up, as there's even some estimates that it could be nearly 15,000 people, if not more, that died because of this policy when previously the New York governor's office reported 8,500, which of course is nearly doubled the actual numbers that we still don't actually know. Again, 9,000 people with the sickness were sent back to nursing homes. Wow, it's, it's almost as if they were doing everything in their power to make this as worst as possible. And if there's any justice in the world, they will face the true repercussions and consequences for their actions. He, of course, is not the only top Democratic governor facing criticism and also possibility of expulsion from his power, as, of course, California Governor Newsom is also under fire from fellow Democrats because of his response to the 2020 sickness, as of course also just recently their ballot initiative to get him recalled has just officially passed, reached enough signatures to force a vote statewide to potentially recall him. Yes, 1.5 million people signed a petition to kick out the California governor from office, as even the people on his political side are saying enough of you. Since, of course, just like Andrew Cuomo, Newsom used this entire tragedy last year to personally push his larger political agenda, enforcing crazy rules while not following them himself. Now, it is also important to note here that a lot of the cases, a lot of the hospitalizations from last year's sickness are actually going down right after, of course, the inauguration of Joe Biden. As we look nationwide, cases, hospitalizations, all dramatically down, some in the numbers from 45 to 55%, especially in states like Florida, which we're going to be talking about in a little bit, as, of course, Joe Biden is eyeing domestic travel restrictions to that state that, of course, is doing way better than California and New York, which is absolutely tone deaf, just like the meeting that Andrew Cuomo is having with the U.S. president right now, Joe Biden, at the White House to discuss, of course, the federal government bailing out the New York governor and his failed administration so that taxpayers all throughout the United States could pay for the mistakes of New York. Perfect opportune time as Como is going through a scandal and Biden is making up more rules as he goes along. As of course, he also put in a national mask mandate, especially on federal property, and then shortly after was pictured on federal property not wearing a mask. He is now going as far as to saying that Americans will have to wear the face mask up until next year, 2022, after, quote, the experts that keep flip-flopping and can't get one thing right, warned that it may take until Thanksgiving to, quote, hit herd immunity. As, of course, he's also pushing an untested rushed shot that, of course, was supposed to change everything, but now even Dr. Fauci saying, even with this rushed experimental shot, you're still going to have to wear the mask for several months. And he announced that the shot will be available for everyone in April, which of course means great business for the pharma industrial complex that of course is making a lot of money under the former Trump administration and now Biden administration, who by the way is going even farther than Donald Trump when it comes to pleasing 
the pharma industrial complex, as insulin prices for a 90-day supply have already reached $1,500 and under the Trump administration, they were around $100. So yeah, as trade protections disappearing, wealth inequality becomes more apparent as there's a massive influx of low-wage immigrants, energy jobs cut, and stimulus checks shrinking. We, of course, just have the beginning of the Biden administration. And what did you think was going to happen? It's ridiculous to think that things wouldn't go any other way, as, of course, the special interest will be getting their way more than they ever have before. Also, very interestingly, surrounding this shot that we were just talking about, it is important to note here that Russian President Vladimir Putin has refused to take the Russian version of this shot and said that, quote, he could get the shot later this year, insisting that he won't monkey around doing it in front of cameras. This, of course, is breeding uh, a lot of skepticism, which there rightfully should be, especially when we have government officials playing party politics with this sickness rather than, of course, actually help people, which they never did. They were never going to. They work for the special interests that only benefit them and no one else. Wake up, America, to this reality, since your ignorance of it is what's leading it to be the current status quo. And again, you would think federally there would be some accountability for the state of California, the state of New York, by the federal authorities that, again, the state of New York was just caught lying to, but no. The federal authorities are going after states like Florida that comparatively have been doing a way better job, not only with the sickness, but also with their economy, also with the social well-being of their citizenry. And because Florida doesn't toe the line, doesn't do what they're told, doesn't follow the agenda that's been robbing the American people of their wealth, now it looks like the Biden administration wants to restrict a domestic travel ban to the state of Florida. Yes, the federal government is threatening your ability to go to Florida. Personally, this is why I might go to Florida very soon. If I know anyone in the region that could potentially also have a parking place for an RV, let me know on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Luke We Are Change. I would greatly appreciate that. Now, even though the federal government is floating this around, this news has been met by outrage. The Florida governor, along, of course, with politicians like Marco Rubio, are speaking out against this. And they should be because a domestic travel ban is just absolutely absurd, especially in a place where the cases and sicknesses are going down in a state that has been doing way better than all the other states when it comes to the entire situation that we're in. Special interests, the powerful will always get their way no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the truth is, only because of our ignorance. If you're a part of their club, you don't have to play by any of the rules. That's why, quote, high-valued business travelers are exempt from a lot of the quarantines in the United Kingdom. Bill Gates is buying up properties, farms, railroads, left and right as much as he can, as of course massive suicide rates are going up amongst school children, who of course are, are denied being able to go to school. The Biden administration is not an administration of the people. And yeah, I told you so. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't help it. Again, you're in Florida. Hit me up. Twitter. Look, we are changed. I look forward towards expanding my horizons. I got a lot of very interesting projects coming up that I think you guys will like. The best way to find out about that is, of course, through our email list on wearechange.org, top right-hand corner. Put it in your email. We're going to announce some exciting news coming up very soon with this independent media organization that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for you, amazing human beings, sharing this videos with your friends, family members, exes, whoever it may be, because you do, I'm still here. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.